Hi, this is Somejit Das. Welcome to Take Your Time. Now, I will be creating a playlist on completely on the basis of RX Java and uh, actually on the basis of Android uh, application development with RX Java, where I will be discussing introduction to RX Java, RX observables, operators, RX with retrofit, making asynchronous calls, RX with room database, MVP, and whatnot. So basically. that is the complete thought process of me uh, again working on the uh, working on making youtube videos now first of all this is the first video where i will be discussing introduction to rx java and why you need to move to rx java to build your android applications uh, and this being the first video i am putting more emphasis on this one because uh, my whole motto of building this playlist is to uh, think of someone who is really novice in terms of building application android applications with rx java and i would i really like him to move completely towards building applications in a reactive manner so with that being said let's just get started so the things we will discuss and this this uh, particular video will only be uh, comprises of theoretical point of view why you need to move to rx java from the coding part for the from the next videos we will discuss how you will go along with the coding so the things we will be discussing is what is reactive programming first of all then we will slowly build up what is rx java and rx android and finally we will conclude why you need to move to rx java so first thing first what is reactive programming so now if you can see there is one thing you are one one particular equation you are seeing x equal to y plus z so what is this here it says that x is the summation of y plus z Why the the value of y and z add add up those two values you get the x value right now this is a way to uh, look from the left side of the equations x value equals to y value plus z value but what if you you take a look and you you think it from the right side of the equation here you can think that here is a value of y here is a value of z we just observe those values y's and z's and as soon as they get added. if we can observe those values those changes of y and z values we actually get the x value that is how uh, your thought process should be in terms of reactive programming you have to think you have to think from a observer point of view so basically if you can uh, think of this particular picture what i have just introduced here there is one thing called observable one thing called observer so basically if you can think of observing anything you become the observer and the thing that you are observing becomes a observable that is the same thing here we have to do so you have to think of a particular stream of data which is observable which emits the data and there is one consumer available who is the observer who is actually getting that data and there is in between a line you get a scheduler or, or you you get intermediate uh, brokers you can think of who are actually the scheduler schedulers means here uh, thread management i am really talking about manages concurrency that is what it is written but apart from that there are so many logics also you can introduce when you get the data from observable to observer now then we can actually conclude that rx is observable plus observer plus scheduler so this is a you know uh, this is more of a equation kind of thing but you will slowly get the grasp of the inner meanings what is happening once you start coding in a rx manner so what is then reactive programming in a nutshell this is a very good uh, you know definition i have found over internet that reactive programming is a programming paradigm oriented around data flows and the propagation of change so basically we are following a particular data we are observing a particular data set or a data stream whatever you can think of and as soon as there is a change we get the current values that is how reactive programming works now so what is rx java and rx android so basically for when we talk about reactive programming every possible language that you think of in terms of programming like swift for ios programming like js uh, js means javascript or even uh, even kotlin also they all have their implementation of reactive programming where you get a lot of libraries lot of classes with with what your uh, 
reactive programming uh, you know the, the, the way you can program using reactive programming becomes easier so those classes makes your life easier when you talk about reactive programming with that language so rx java is basically the java based implementation of that and rx android basically it's none other than you will get it it's more of a library where you get a lot of uh, uh, different classes which are really helpful for you to build up android applications so basically i can give you a uh, you know the basic example so uh, whenever you can you know you can actually think of a scenario where you have to manage you know uh, change up uh, or you have to render certain data once you get the data for us uh, from data stream in your ui so in that case you have to always look for ui thread now android rx android gives you an android schedulers main thread with which you can actually make those changes in your ui so now that being discussed why we need to move to rx java in terms of android development so in order to think of why i would like to give you a particular scenario think of a scenario where you have to hit multiple apis in parallel and store that particular data in your database and as soon as there is a change in the database or as soon as the data is inserted in the database you have to show it in the ui so for that to actually for that to make it facilitated you need a certain piece of solutions so the first thing that comes in your mind that you, you, you can actually uh, segregate the complete uh, question or complete scenario so the first thing that is you have to call different apis now and different api call must be happening in parallel that that is the question over here hit multiple apis in parallel and store the data in database so if you are hitting multiple apis in parallel you don't know when one response comes because it it, it you are not quite sure on uh, what is the kind of network you are dealing with right so basically you have to manage the states for each and every response as soon as it comes even sometimes one one api might give you an error and another api gives you a success how you manage all those so this introduces a lot of boilerplate codes and those state management has to be done by you if you are going by a conventional method now the second thing is i have uh, here another requirement is store the complete data in database so that means you have to combine both the data sets what if one particular api fails another one actually gives you the data how you manage that that is the error management part that you have to do also third part is store the complete data in database that is a uh, you know not a tricky task but here is a question another one as soon as the change is change is there in database or the data is inserted in the database you have to show it in the ui now how you are going to do it if you are going to do it with conventional sqlite database then in that case it becomes very difficult because you have to uh, you know somehow you have to create a custom event listener which actually triggers a particular event that okay my data is inserted now you qu can query the database and if you are going with architecture pad uh, architecture components like room database and all you can actually do it with live data and dot those sort of things we'll come to it later uh, but basically this if you are going with uh, conventional approach this again becomes another headache for you and the fourth one is filtering that is not of much of a bigger task so basically you can filter if the filtering process is simple you can actually write the query on the on that basis or even filtering tasks if you are going to not do it on the query you can actually get the whole data and filter it out before showing it the ui that again see you you have to do it uh, in your way now the third and now the fifth and final thing thread management what if the data that you are getting with one api it's a you know uh, complete a socket so socket means there is a stream of data that you that you will all you always have to get so as as long as there is data in the socket present you have to get that data so basically you can't really go on with that uh, in the main thread right you can't really call a socket uh, call for some data from a socket and you are not quite sure for how long you will be pulling that data in the main thread so there comes the twist you have to change the threads also because ui thread with that logic in ui thread it is not really possible and it will give a completely bad user experience 
so all these solutions are needed if you are going to uh, you know facilitate this particular scenario in conventional way now in case of rx java if you think for the first point you can actually hit multiple apis with rx java operators like zip is there merge is there concat is there so it depends on your uh, you know the your requirement how you want to hit the multiple apis in parallel now combining both data sets you can actually do it with rx operators that is really an easy if you go with zip it actually gives you a combined data set store complete data in database and have custom event listener if you are going with room you can actually um, with, without using live data and with using room you can actually make it happen with rx java so you can wrap your data set which is coming out of the room database with some sort of observable maybe flowable this in this case if the back pressure is not needed so basically back pressure is something we'll discuss later on but uh, you can actually wrap it with some sort of observable and as soon as there is db insertion you can observe that change filtering is something which becomes uh, what do you say the, you have actually in rx java you have a lot of uh, filtering operators with which your life becomes easier in terms of filtering even if you are not uh, writing the filtering logic in query and finally for thread management in rx java you get a you get like uh, different sort of threads schedulers different sort of schedulers all backed up by thread pools schedulers io schedulers computation so what not so basically complete solution you will get as a package in rx java so and the best part of that one once you implement this whole thing in rx java your code becomes also streamlined you don't really need to uh, you know uh, you, you don't really need to write a lot of boilerplate code with a lot of state management things so with that being said so again that was the thing so we can now think of the advantages in a nutshell so the best part of that one what we have already discussed is uh, eliminate callbacks what i mean by eliminate callbacks is uh, that thing only what we have discussed so basically uh, there is one more scenario actually we can think of in terms of eliminate callbacks so let's think of two api calls you are making and the second one is dependent on certain sort of data from uh, which is coming from the first api call in that case it becomes a callback hell or even callback hell you can think of callback hell once uh, so basically what is callback hell means is from one api call in the on error or on success you are hitting another api call so once you get the callback as these are asynchronous calls you are not quite sure when you get the callbacks right so once you get the callbacks you again hit another api maybe if i can introduce the third one again for that the second one's uh, callback you have to hit a third one so the code becomes very uh, very much very much not readable and the lot of boilerplate codes and also it's it's very difficult to uh, analyze the code properly because in every callback you are making another api call so uh, with rx this particular thing can be eliminated you can introduce a flat map operator with rx java to make this thing sorted and your code base becomes very streamlined now the second part is disposable what is disposable so you can think of one thing that uh, you are making an asynchronous call right and in the meantime when the call is still uh, when the call is still there in the queue you are going to cancel it so in that case you uh, with uh, retrofit you can actually have a uh, what do you say call object once you create that call of call and afterwards you can cancel it out right as soon as you need it if that is in the that is present in the queue but with rx every particular operation every particular operation not only asynchronous api call every possible operations that you make with rx as soon as there is a connection or the subscription happens between your observable and your observer there is this disposable object that uh, you get it and you can actually dispose that object whenever you require so so basically you it can happen that with one activity you are making a asynchronous call and the call has gone now the user is navigating to a different page so even if the call comes back and you are trying to render the data which is coming from the call to the uh, ui the ui is not present so the 
uh, you will get a exception or cra some crash will crash may come up so in that case you can actually dispose that particular disposable as soon as your uh, where you so as soon as your uh, user changes the screen so maybe you can put that logic in the on destroy of the activity or or whatever you actually require that to stay so you can put that logic there so every particular subscription gives you a disposable instance which you can dispose anytime you want so the next part we i have already discussed streamlined coding everything becomes streamlined you don't really need to write uh, a lot of logic here and there so the reader who is going through the code he really does not have to do a lot of face a lot of problems in terms of reading and whenever something breaks down it is easier for you also to understand where the problem is fourth and uh, one of the cool thing of rx java is operators you get a lot of operators everything you think of in terms like like filtering like making uh, you know combining multiple data sets together like uh, using one data set for another call or for another operation all these things you get a lot of operators with rx java so your life becomes really really easier believe me now the final part is multi threading i have already discussed you get a lot of threads with uh, backed by thread pools so you know changing threads here and there is not a issue with rx java so you can easily like you will be writing one single line of code and that changes the complete thing you are in this thread you write one single line of code and from that point onwards everything in the chain happens in a different thread so when we will discuss when we will discuss further when we will think of the coding when we will actually code it through you will get to see how we can change the threads here and there so basically these are really cool advantages from rx java point of view and i am pretty much excited for all of you to who is who has actually moved to rx java he that is pretty good or something but who has not done it i am thinking that this is the very good time and opportunity for us to learn rx java and make our life very easy to very easy to build functional and modular and streamline android coding with rx java so with that being said from the next video onwards we will discuss rx observables and operators and what not so that's it welcome to rx world thank you bye see you in the next video